Okay, hi, welcome to a new video. So, I don't even know if I'm gonna post this, but I just saw her video and then I was like, oh, this sounds fun, I wanna try it also. Don't know where it will lead to, but just in case I'm filming it. This video was uploaded like one month ago, but I just started watching it. It just came out on my watch later. There are like 400 plus videos on my watch later. So, that video is Books and Lala's video, Choosing My Next Read Scavenger Hunt Decides My TBR. Let's just screen record and then pause whenever. So, I just started screen recording. I I watch all my videos on two times speed so it's not on anything it's just my personal preference i don't know but i have a free afternoon so i figured we could do it together and you can tell me even if you're not gonna read the book that you end up with like you do this with me follow all the prompts tell me the list the journey that you went on and what you should be reading at the end this is especially if you're feeling uninspired by your tv yourself which happens to me like in the spring every year and i do this every single spring i do remember the first prompt i already prepared for it it's grab your favorite book now i need to grab my favorite book and okay just to respond to the video i have things to read i have a lot of things to read but i just found this video interesting so i wanted to try it for myself as well so i need to grab my favorite book let's do it but there's so many favorites how even oh. i decided to grab the book that is my favorite of 2022 lonely castle in the mirror and yeah let's just continue watching the video i don't think i need to explain why that's my favorite book right it's like in so many of my videos already here it should be our favorite book so far this year and for me i didn't know what to pick but i was staring at all the books that I've Oh, wait, she just said it should be our favourite book so far this year. Okay, then pause. <laughs> so, if you haven't already watched my mid-year book freakout tag, I will link it up above for you. But basically, I'll spoil it right now. I said that my favourite book of the year so far was Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. And look at my tabs. I just really like academia in books. And when it's not like super boring and it's quite interesting and then there's like humor there's like found family in this as well and it's also a bit of romance and it's just everything that i love there's also a very beloved pet in here as well so that's my pick now it says go to the acknowledgements and the first name you see find a book by an author with the same name okay go to the acknowledgements first name you see find an author with the same name okay <laughs> i'm a bit scared because my shelf is not i don't think there are a lot of books but okay oh okay the first okay 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 <laughs> i just flipped from the back and first name that caught my eye was Laura. Let me try and show it to you without ruining my copy. <laughs> okay, let us not attempt that again because the angle definitely changed. But yeah, okay, anyway, Laura. Hopefully that split second showed the name Laura. Okay, so now I'm gonna find a book whose author is Laura. <laughs> I found a book. Oh my god, I was actually worried that I, I need to stop the video. But I found a book. Okay, so the book is Castles in, in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian. Thank you so much for Times Reads for sending this review copy over to me. Let's see what happens. Okay, okay, so let's figure out what the next prompt that I invented is. Find something on that cover. So I guess I don't have to use the whole book. Find something on that cover and find another book with that thing in the title. Pick something on that cover and find another book with the thing in the title. <sighs> but there is nothing except a female. She is holding leaves. Here and she's wearing a dress and she's a white female. I guess anything that has something like that. Okay, I was assume female on the cover. If not leaves on the cover. Let me go and find. I mean there are leaves here in from Blood and Ash, but let me try and find if there's anything. Oh female on the oh 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 we also have a magic steeped in poison. Female on the cover. Oh there's a lotus. What's the plural of lotus? Does lotai? <laughs> Do lotuses have leaves? Oh my god, I think so. I mean, these are petals, kind of the same vibe, right? Okay, okay, I'm gonna put back from Blood and Ash, see if we can find better one. Oh, oh, okay, um, we also have Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. I mean, she's also like wearing this kind of historical dress kind of thing. Her dress is made out of roses. Yeah, I feel like, okay, let's see, yeah. I think vibes alone, I'm gonna go with Clockwork Princess. That's an interesting one. Go to page 50, line 5. Pick a word from that line and find a title with that word. Okay. Go to page 50, line 5. Pick a word from that line and find a title with that word. <laughs> okay, let's try. Page 50, line 5. Pick a word from that line, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> Is the me considered like a line? I'm gonna count it. My words for line 5 are And Claude, you, Tessa said in concern You're bleeding You're bleed <laughs> Okay, Claude, you, bleed Claude, you, bleed Okay Oh, I'm not feeling part of my channel It's ever again 
Okay, so my contenders are I'll give you the sun. Where is it? You can't see it because it's behind this, but it's I'll give you the sun. You, if not, it is from Blood and Ash. I'm gonna say bleed and blood are kind of like the same root word. This is the noun, then bleed is the verb. <laughs> so I'm gonna choose this one because I think bleed slash blood is more interesting. So yeah, okay. Am I supposed to talk about the books? Um, I'm very confused, but okay, anyway, let me just rewind a bit. <laughs> Castles in their bones. So this one is about three sisters off the top of my head. They each have a mission to travel to the three different kingdoms in that world and then they are tasked with something but I can't remember what. It's either to get married or get something and then their mom is kind of like the mastermind of everything. You follow each sister's perspective. That's all I remember from this book but I remember that it was an okay read. Like not bad. Quite nice. Then Clockwork Princess is the last book in the Infernal Devices trilogy. Also my favourite in that whole trilogy. It has the book with my most favorite epilogue of all time. Look at my tabs. The series is about shadow hunters, but in the early stages. So we follow like Tessa Gray, who is not a shadow hunter. Nobody knows what she is in the first book. And then she slowly discovers what she is, and then she also gets acquainted with the shadow hunters of the London Institute. There is like this nefarious things going on in the background. There is romance, there is fantasy, there is historical elements, there is a lot of comedy in this because Will Herondale is such a gem. <laughs> and then we also have gem cast there. So there's three of them and then this is the last book. From Blood and Ash, I have yet to read this book actually. So all I know is that this book is very divisive. People say it, like it's really good or like the writing is terrible and things like that. It is written by Jennifer L. Armantrout so I assume it is fantasy romance. Not sure what my thoughts are yet. It's very thick also. Not sure when I'll get to it also. Okay, let's continue. Okay, find a 5 star read with the same colours on the cover. So we have black, we have red, we have a bit of white, we have first this bronze. Okay, let's see what we can do. Okay, I have found my content. Oh my god, my hair just gets more disheveled the further the video goes on. I was thinking of X's and O's, which is somewhere there because the guy has like a red sweater on in the cover. But I found the perfect match. So matching this color is definitely Six of Crows, right? I mean, just look at it. It's like so red and black themed. So this is just my answer. Also look at the covers. Oh, <laughs> I'm still jarred by my annotations from the past. But okay. And anyway, Six of Crows. <laughs> I forgot to say what it's about. So this is also fantasy romance, young adult. And it's like the best young adult fantasy romance that I've ever read so far. By Lipa Dugo, by any author in general. So Six of Crows, it has a found family element in it. This. I really really like the character relationships in this. The plot, I also found it to be really good. I have reread this once and it was still as good. <laughs> I was still very sad by something that happened. It's just like a book with really really strong character relationships and their character developments throughout the story. In the first book, they go on a heist and so he can't do it alone so he got together this group of outcasts and then together they go on this heist together for the reward at the end and it's just them forming friendships and really close relationships with each other by the end of the book and it's a duology. Heard that it's going to be a trilogy soon but don't know when exactly the last book is going to come out but you can read it as a duology. The heist element is very good. Character relationships are very strong. Plot is good as well. So yeah, I really recommend. Really five stars. Maybe I'm going to my TBR shelf now. Let's see. Find a book with the same number of pages. You can use the reads for this, of course. The amount of pages is 287. Okay, with the same number of pages. The thing is, I don't update my good reads, so like, I set myself up for this one. The thing is, do I count all the pages at the end? I will see how. Okay, if I don't count the character art, it's 494. If I count it, it's 509. I don't think I can find the same number, but if I can, I will try. 510, if not, it's 494. Five. I will try some more. If not, this will be my option. Okay, I give up. <laughs> this is the closest. It's This Woven Kingdom by Tahira Mafi. Again, thank you so much to Times Reads for sending me this beautiful copy. Just look at this. These are my tabs. This is another fantasy romance young adult. This one, I really felt the young adult from this. Maybe because I read this at an older age. But this one, it follows the crown prince Kamran. And this girl, who is actually a long lost heir to the ancient Jin kingdom, known as Ali their interactions and romance and the world. Not doing a great job explaining this but honestly don't remember much other than the fact that it was enjoyable when I read it. Don't know what it says that now that I can't remember anything about it but yeah. This one. Flip open to any page. The first name you see find a book by an author who shares that name. Oh gosh. 
Oh, I'm so scared of this. Okay, click open to any page, find an author with the first name that you see. Okay, I'm gonna do this blindly. Let me find a place to put my finger. Okay, okay, okay. First name. Uh... It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. I'm not gonna find any book with the name Alija, okay? So I'm gonna find another one. But this is such a sabotaging book because all I see is Alija. I don't know how, what to do now. I searched Goodreads and nothing came up for Alija. And then we have Kamran, which is also what I cannot find. Mm, okay, the only solution I can think of is similar sounding names. Can we just do something with A? I'll just do that, okay? <laughs> Okay, I'm so sorry that this is the only thing that I can find. Technically, there was Heartstopper by Alice Osman, but I chose Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood because at least Ali is the same. That's the best that I can do. Oh no! Problem number 7 of 10 is find another title with the same number of letters. Really, I couldn't have- Now I have to find another book with the same number of letters in the title. So this is- 17 letters! Okay, let's try. Okay. That saves a lot of time. Ali Hazelwood, you're the best because the love hypothesis is also 17 letters. Let's not talk about how these two are of different heights. I am already very sad, but yeah, anyway, I found my book. Oh, I forgot to say again. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Anyway, this is the newest purchase to my shelves. The character is called Elsie, which I hate that name so much. I'm so sorry to any Elsies who are watching, but it has caused me a lot of trauma. <laughs> Still causes me a lot of trauma. People just mistake my name as Elsie all the time. But anyway, hoping that I will ignore that and read this book and love it because this is another kind of like female in STEM kind of romance. We follow Elsie. C. Hannaway, who is a theoretical physicist. She interacts with Jack Smith, who is the annoyingly attractive and arrogant older brother of her favourite client. He's also the same person who rules over the physics department at MIT, standing right between her and her dream job. So it's just about their interactions and their romance. And then the love hypothesis, the first romance book I gave 5 stars to, have yet to transfer my tabs over. But this is the first book that she released that was in the whole like female and STEM kind of romance. So this one is about Olive and Adam. Apparently it's like a Star Wars kind of fan fiction but it turned into like a stand alone but everybody who knows about the world can tell that it's fan fiction but I don't know about the world so it doesn't apply to me. We follow Olive Smith who is a third year PhD candidate so she lied to her friend that she had a date that night just so that her friend can go on a date with this guy that was originally on good terms with Olive but Olive didn't like him so she tried to push her to the guy by saying like oh I have a date I don't really care. She then sees her friend that same night in the lab and so she panicked because she doesn't want her lie to be exposed. Then she just kisses the first guy that she sees who happens to be Adam, who is a young hotshot professor and he's well known for being an asshole. It's on favourable terms for them both to fake a relationship together, so that's what they do and then they just develop feelings from that. Really good, but I guess it can be cringy to some. Find a book with a similar cover? Now that's fun because I need to find a book with a similar cover. Well, I just sabotaged myself, right? Because look at how similar these two are. <laughs> But now I can't do that, so let's find something else. Okay, so I have chosen X's and O's. It has come to this book eventually, just because of the illustrated cover, the two main leads on the cover. They're not kissing, but they look like they want to kiss each other. And this one is a 5 star that I gave this year. So this one is the second book in the Set on You series. I love this so much more. It's about Tara Chen, who loves romance novels. She has had her heart broken 10 different times by her 10 different exes. She kind of becomes roommates with Trevor, who used to be roommates with her brother-in-law. Now they are roommates and then she gets inspired to try to, to find true love by reigniting with her exes by going on dates with them and then hopefully through second chance romance find true love and so he is enlisted to help with this the story just progresses from there really cute epilogue as well oh wait this is the last prompt I forgot prompt number 10 is read so prompt number 9 is flip to a random page point oh okay so we're at the last one flip to a random page point at a word and find that word in a book title on your TBR shelf okay I got looks. Looks solemn. <laughs> I'm gonna call it right now and say that I don't have. I already tried to find. So, I'm gonna give myself another chance. I got ask. <laughs> Help. I'm conceding defeat again. One last chance. Okay, okay, I got four. So, I'm gonna find a book with the word four. It should be quite simple, right? Four. 
found my book. Okay, okay, okay. So at first I was thinking maybe I should find because I have two books with the word four, like number four, in the title. But then I found a book that has the actual word that I found, F-O-R-4. And that book is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. So this was a book that was kindly sent to me by Mason. And it was through this event or like program run by A Million Books on Instagram, A Million Books SG. And they had this like secret Santa swap thing. So she was my Santa and then she gave me A Tale for the Time Being. So I'll be reading this book. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so happy. I finally, this video can go out. <laughs> So, I guess I'll read this eventually and give you my thoughts on it. So, that's the end of the scavenger hunt. If you played along, let me know what book you found as well. But we will now commence the reading vlog portion of this video. Several days later. Hi! So, I have finally started reading A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. This story is follows two perspectives. The first one being now. She has written a diary and at the time of writing, she was 16. So, once she finished writing the diary about about her story and her great-grandmother. She put her diary and a bunch of letters in a Hello Kitty lunchbox and just sent it out into the sea. I think that's what happened. We don't know just yet but the fact was the other perspective. Ruth found the lunchbox in this Ziploc bag and she found it like washed up ashore on one of the beaches and so she's just reading Nao's diary. Her diary entries are like presented to us in the form of a perspective in this book. Also I just realized like Ruth and author is called Ruth. I'm not sure if that was intentional but yeah so that is just what's happening at the moment and between the two perspectives I'm really more intrigued by Nao's one because Nao was like uprooted from her home in the US and she transferred to study in one of the schools in Japan. She experienced severe bullying while she was studying there as like a transfer student. Like while I thought Korea was known for their bullying in schools but what is described here is like oh my goodness it's so terrible. Things in her family are not going really well so like her father was let go from his current position and ever since then he has struggled to get a job and so he slowly slowly becomes like a hermit which they have a term for but I can't remember it just yet and the mom has to step up and become the breadwinner of the family essentially their family is just really interesting but also really tragic in a sense because so many things are happening so that's why I'm more interested in Nao's perspective on the other hand like I don't understand why we had the need for Ruth's perspective at all because I don't really see how her perspective is value adding to the story just yet and I think that was echoed in a lot of other reviews for this book as well and Anyway, for this story, they have like footnotes at the bottom of the page here for like different terms in Japan that we may not understand which I found really interesting. I am currently at page 111 out of 418 so I would say I'm making quite good progress. Hopefully I finish this soon so that this video can get uploaded soon. Really like not a story I have ever read before. Maybe because it's like in the fiction genre and I don't really read books from that genre like literary fiction I would say. So not sure how I feel about the story just yet but I would say it's okay, like quite interesting so far. So yeah, I'll keep you updated on my thoughts once I get further into the story. Hi! So I'm coming back to update that I finished A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki. Oh, I just realized that this was the 2013 Man Booker Prize finalist. Let's do trigger warnings first. Trigger warnings for bullying, self-harm, suicide, child abuse, mental health issues, war, historical trauma, sexual content, death, existential themes, and animal cruelty. I did not expect so many trigger warnings when I was reading this book. So imagine my surprise when suddenly the themes just surfaced in the book. In the end, I decided to give this 2.5 stars because it was quite boring for me when I was tracking this book in my reading tracker i realized that this book was actually magical realism like it was listed as magical realism and maybe that's why i didn't really enjoy this because i don't really enjoy magical realism stories although it didn't occur to me while i was reading this that this was magical realism my comments about the book from the previous clip still remain the same in that i still enjoyed now's perspective 
more than Ruth's perspective although in the end I realised that Ruth's perspective was there to help readers understand Nao's diary entries more and also find out what happened to Nao at the end of her story when Ruth got to the end of her diary to give an example this would be spoilers already Nao's relationship with her father is not the best because Nao thinks that her father is like a good for nothing because he is a recluse a hermit he is suicidal there was this incident involving one of his attempts and it was related to something that happened to now but i didn't understand that until we got to the next chapter which was ruth's perspective and her partner was explaining to her like don't you get it like he committed suicide because he failed to do something for now so yeah that's the gist of it honestly really sad that i didn't enjoy this as much as i thought i would especially because it's a gift from mason right which is like so sad i'm so sorry but i am going to unhaul this because i don't think i will want to keep this on my shelf because i really didn't enjoy it that much i don't think this is a story for me because i didn't really get it while i was reading it i got bored very quickly so i found myself skimming a lot and then in the end i had to like find the uh, spark notes or something to understand the story again so i believe this book should go to the hands of someone who will treasure and enjoy this book more so i'm going to unhaul this book but this video was really very fun to do because of the first time i'm doing this scavenger hunt thing so as i mentioned at the start i have tried to do this video before but at the point of trying i didn't have enough books to be able to successfully fulfill the prompts so now that i actually can is really very wow i don't know whether the next time i do it or if there's next time whether it will be successful or not because my books are just like here but yeah this is really fun to do i hope you enjoyed watching the whole process of me finding the book through the scavenger hunt and then me reading the book in this video as well so yeah this brings me to the end of this video if you enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up consider subscribing to my channel for more of such content i hope you're having a great day or a great week whenever or wherever you are remember to stay hydrated and yeah i'll see you in my next video